Within Unit 7, we will be looking at quantitative data collection and in particular questionnaire design, as the use of questionnaires is the most common form of quantitative data collection for Masters and MBA students. For undertaking this unit, you should have a better understanding of how you can collect quantitative data if your proposed research will involve quantitative data. The objectives for this session are to understand the strengths and weaknesses of quantitative data and to understand the different common methods of collecting quantitative data. So quantitative data is data in the form of numbers and this involves reducing the world around us along with possibly people's views, beliefs and experiences into numbers. And this reduction into numbers allows standardisation and it supports the researcher to make generalisations using these numbers. Analysis is conducted through the use of diagrams and statistics explaining what the meaning and relationship between these numbers are. So there are numerous common data collection methods for collecting quantitative data. These involve both primary data collected by the researcher and secondary data sets collected by someone else. So when it comes to primary data, the most common method, particularly for master's level research, is the use of a questionnaire. Questionnaires allow the respondent to, in their own time, tick boxes accordingly. Now, questionnaires are normally used to reduce the social world down so we can collect uh, quantitative data. We'll discuss questionnaires in more detail in the next video as part of this unit. The second method we will discuss is the use of numerical workplace figures. So within the work environment, there are numerous numerical data sets which a researcher could potentially collect and use as part of their research. So for example, this might include such information as absenteeism or the number of defects on a particular manufacturing line. When it comes to secondary data, the most common types of quantitative secondary data are economic data, such as GDP figures and economic growth figures. A lot of accounting-based research also looks at financial figures. So these might be data sets such as profit and loss accounts or balance sheets from company accounts. Now there are challenges to using quantitative secondary data. Firstly, the data was not collected specifically for the research project. And this often means that the data is aggregated together which can make it hard for the research to break down, particularly if the researcher is looking to do inferential statistics and go beyond descriptive statistics. Often the research will need the variables and the data at the individual level. So this is normally the individual level of a respondent. And often this data is aggregated together as part of a secondary data set. So this can make it challenging for the researcher. Also, the data collected has normally been used for the purpose of the original research. And this can make it hard for the secondary researcher to create new inference and findings with the data because the data has already been used as part of an existing research project and published potentially. And we've discussed before one of the important things when developing a master's level piece of research is to make sure it is innovative and it is novel and original. And this can be challenging if you're using secondary data which has already been used for a piece of research. Now there are criticisms of quantitative research. Firstly, quantitative research fails to distinguish people and social institutions from the world of nature. This means that quantitative research often treats people and social institutions similarly to the natural world of science and physics, and it doesn't look at the interrelationships and the complex nature 
of people and these social institutions and their interactions. Also, the measurement process of quantitative research possesses an artificial and spurious sense of precision and accuracy. So when it comes to quantitative data analysis, we use recommendations from statistical literature. However, ultimately, an element of interpretation is needed even for quantitative research and quantitative statistical analysis. So the argument here is that undertaking statistical analysis can offer a false sense of security about precision and accuracy. And ultimately, quantitative analysis also involves an element of interpretation. The next point is the reliance on instruments such as questionnaires and procedures hinder the connection between research and everyday life. Ultimately, by giving someone a questionnaire, it might actually remove the reality of everyday life. And people might answer questionnaires differently and maybe not truthfully. And actually, we're removing that person from everyday life and making them fill in a questionnaire, which might not be getting the genuine view of the everyday life situation. And finally, the analysis of relationships between variables creates a static view of social life that is independent of people's lives. And of course, it's measured at one point in time, so it's static. So in conclusion, quantitative data supports generalizability and standardization. Statistical interpretation uses existing statistical rules and norms is normally used which helps to support transparency. However, still an element of interpretation is used within these existing statistical rules and norms. And finally, conducting statistical analysis of secondary quantitative data can be challenging. So make sure you give some thought to how you can create something new if you're using secondary quantitative data and also whether you can break down the data enough to be able to conduct a good level of inferential analysis.